So in this video, I will show you how to create your first exam paper. So once you have successfully logged into exam.net, you see that there is a tab for my exams. You can actually create a new subgroup if you would like to categorize your test papers based on class or based on subjects. So to start off, we can try to create new exam by clicking this button. Assign the exam name for your paper. Say for example, this one would be a no digital exam question. We will try out with this kind of no digital exam question. Now, there are various types of exam question papers that can be created using exam.net. The first one, which is the easiest, is a no digital exam questions. That means no question will be shown in exam.net. This is useful for subjects that you have already distributed your question paper or a subject that does not require any form of question paper to be given out digitally to the student. For the remaining ones, we will do it in a separate video to show you how it looks like. Next, let's have a look at student information. It is important for us to check first name, last name, class, teacher's name, and phone number of a student. The second option here is anonymized exam. This one, it depends on the teachers, whether they want the answers being collected from the students to, have uh, to be anonymous or not, because some teachers may feel that they may, may be biased when they see a student's name when they mark the paper. But do not worry, if you were to activate this, you can still see the student's name after grading the paper. This way, it can create a more fair and unbiased environment for the teacher. Next, we can see a little chemical conical flask here. This one, I do not recommend you to do any settings here or changes here. This allows simplified resume of an exam. Now, in the event of a student being kicked out of the exam, actually, we want them to re-sign in using a unique key. All the students sitting for the examination will have a special individual key that the teacher will have. If you select this and turn it on, that means you can have the same student log in with the same name over and over and over again. And we do not want that. In the event of a student who wants to change to another device and when he or she has to log in with the same name, we do not want a repetitive login from the same student. Therefore, this, this student will come to look for the teacher and request a unique key. The teacher will then provide the unique key for the students so that they can use another device to continue their progress. Next, we have a student workspace. Now, due to the nature of our examination, I strongly recommend turning on the writing area. This writing area is giving the student a digital version of Fullscape paper or an A4 paper so that the students can actually write down or type it down whatever they want as their answers. Depending on the subject teacher, if you want to limit the number of words that you want the students to type, say for example, if they are doing some form of essay, you can change it to 250 if you like it. Next, spelling check. This one depends on the teacher as well, if you want to turn it on or turn it off. The third option is really, really handy because it scans handwritten work with a mobile phone. Now, what this does is, if you want your student to take a photo of their work, be it a hard copy written work or even a digital image work, you have to turn this on so that the student can use another device with a camera to take photo of their work and upload it into this writing space. By turning these two options on in some subjects, for example, mathematics, if you require your student to do mathematics on a full, full scape paper, on a piece of full scape paper by writing down their solutions and you want them to submit that hard copy instead of a digital copy, please turn on this scan handwritten work for them so that they can use their mobile phone to take a photo of their work 
and upload it into this writing area. Next, we have accessibility tools. This one, I will leave it for the teachers to explore it themselves. Audio file is good for a listening comprehension or for this uh, students with um, listening or reading disabilities. But for our case, we hardly require to use this. Uh, we are not required to use this. Subject tools are very useful for depending on your subject. We have drawing tool, a calculator, a graph paper, and a more complicated graph um, paper, some mathematics formulas, and programming which supports JavaScript and Python. In this video, I will not show you how it looks like. This one, we leave it for the subject teachers to explore themselves. Next, we have a resource whereby you can add in additional PDF document if you want your students to refer to some form of references only provided by you. Because when they are sitting for the examination, if they are using a computer, there is no way for them to go from one window to another window. So by doing this, by adding a PDF document, you actually add your own resource for the students to refer when they sit for exam.net. Lastly, for security, to save trouble, we suggest teachers using allow any browser so that students using a tablet, a computer, or a mobile phone can sit for the exam without any issue. High security mode is only required if you are very sure that all your students have already downloaded an exam.net application for the iOS, macOS, or Windows operating system. But in our case, we suggest you to use allow any browser. Lastly, settings for the lower security. Require explanation, but unlock immediately. When I click on this drop-down menu, we see different types of security mode. Require explanation, but unlock immediately actually means if a student were to be kicked out of the examination, when they want to come back into the examination, they only need to provide explanation once they submit the explanation, that paper will be unlocked automatically. Now, if you want to, for the students to wait for 30 minutes, you can select 30 minutes, sorry, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds, or 90 seconds. Or you can choose manual unlock by the teacher. But for our case, we strongly recommend require explanation, but unlock immediately. This is because most students will be kicked out due to bad internet connection and we do not want students to have a timeout for too long in fear that they may take too much time waiting for the paper to be unlocked. Once you have done everything, you can click create the exam. And there you go, your first exam paper has been created with the exam key. The status is it can be conducted with any web browsers on any types of device. Now, an important thing about the accessibility of this test paper is to make sure that it is not discoverable. Why? Because if you have accidentally opened the paper like this, any students with this exam key can go into your exam and start immediately. So we can see that from this access, there are three types of access. You can open it immediately or you can close it whereby students having the exam key cannot go into the exam portal and see the question paper or to make it discoverable but with limited access whereby the students are parked in the lobby until you open the exam. So if you do not need it, just close it. And there you go. These are the simple um, things that you need to be aware of before creating any exam papers using exam.net.